Hello, I'm going to give you a lightning fast demo of the DIA beta and the three big ideas behind the product. So DIA is a response to three structural problems we see with AI chat tools that we think only an operating system or a web browser can respond to. The first is our view is that AI is most powerful, most useful when it is personal to us, right? We don't want GPT-40, we want GPT-Josh. I want an AI model that knows me, my preferences, what's going on in my life. And so you know how on TikTok when you, or Instagram Reels or whatever, when you swipe up, after swiping through every video, it feels like you just taught TikTok or Instagram what you like, what you don't like, and it just gets better just by watching videos and using the product normally. That's the idea behind Dia as well. With every tab that you open, it should feel like this AI model is getting more and more personalized to you, such that at the end of a week of browsing or a month of browsing, let alone a year, like it's gonna know you as well as your closest friends and colleagues. So let me show you what Dia knows about me just from a week of browsing. So if I say, which projects did I work on this week? Or, or which clothing brands do I like? Now, what's interesting about these two queries is like, we don't think that this is, these are actual use cases. I'm just showing you the power behind the hood that we can expose almost as APIs into native experiences that solve real problems for people. So. I mean, this has been a very launch every week, but look what it knows about what's going on in my life. I've been working on our launch strategy, our growth review, our memory feature product work. So I didn't teach Dia any of this stuff. It just knows this about me from using the web like I've always used. And it knows I like APC and Stussy and Tumblr because that those are the shopping pages that I've looked at in the recent week. And so you can imagine how this understanding compounds over time, over time. And just to give you a little taste of how this might be useful, if I say, write a one pager for Dia, I don't need to explain what Dia is. It just knows because it's been working on Dia with me because it's been browsing with me. So the first structural problem that Dia addresses is ChatGPT and these other AI chat tools only see a sliver of my personal and professional life because they're stuck in a chat app. If you embed it in the operating system in the browser, and you learn just from what the person is doing without them having to learn any new behavior, we think we can offer the most personalized AI model on the market. That's thing one. The second idea is that AI is most useful when it is in the tools and the files that we use every day, right? So if I'm writing a document or trying to shop for something or I don't wanna have to copy and paste stuff between an AI chat tool and my working environment. I just want intelligence, personal intelligence in my tools, in my documents. So a great example of this is if I'm working on this document, I can just come over here and click chat with this document and say, turn this into an expanded paragraph. Or I can come over to this article and say, let's see, let's highlight the judge's name and just ask which president appointed her. So these are the sorts of queries and um, use cases I would turn to an AI chat tool for normally. Uh, but here, I don't have to go anywhere. I don't have to upload things to a context window. I don't even need to know what a context window is. I just say, talk to my personal AI like it is a colleague, turn this into an expanded paragraph. And I know it knows what I'm talking about because it's right there with me. Not only that, you know, we can even abstract even more complexity by writing really complex system prompts for vertical use cases, creating custom GUIs and interfaces for certain workflows and jobs to be done so that it really feels like the best of this personal AI is embedded everywhere you go and we abstract as much complexity for you as possible. What's also really interesting here is that um, this is how we envision people working in collaboration with AI agents. Right, uh, we don't envision a world where you're not going to be working in tools and apps and shopping websites anymore. We think what's most more likely, much more likely, is you're going to be looking at a at a product and you're going to say, "Hey, shopping assistant or shopping agent, can you go off and find a few alternatives and price match while you continue to look at the image gallery and stuff?" So what you see here is it called this AI search agent to go off and do some search for us while I'm reading this article. So you can imagine how that expands in the future, but the idea is embed your personal AI throughout all of the tools and keep that UX consistent. And the third and final idea is what's so powerful about LLMs is that it's the new 
English is the new coding language, right? I can describe what I want and I can abstract the complexity of using, of knowing how to code. I can make software for the first time. Why, why, why are, why are there not more AI powered apps made by people that don't know how to code? And how can we bring those powers to more and more people? So this is the earliest thing in the beta that is the most unfinished, but I think it'll give you a glimpse of the future. I made myself a stylist, uh, we call them skills, but you can think of these as AI apps. I made the stylist skill without, I'm a sociology major, without knowing how to code, just in natural language. And so an example, you know, what are you, I, I'm not very trendy, you can see my black shirt, but I aspire to dress a little better. And so I can say, source for the summer and hit enter. Very simple, right? We're not adding complexity, but you can imagine richer GUIs in the future. And what I what I designed this kind of custom AI app to do is to, uh, based on your understanding of the brands that I like and the things that I've been looking to buy, again, compounding with that personal AI, that first point, I want you to go off and give me recommendations in a certain format, in a certain way, in a certain style to help me shop for things. And so here it recommends shorts that I might like based on what it knows about me. And I don't have to write a really long, complex prompt. I can just say shorts for the summer like I would in Google. But because someone, in this case me, has created this AI app that abstracts that complexity, you can imagine a world where, you know, your assistant in DIA is not only going to be the most personal of all the assistants on the market, but it's also going to let you tap into the creativity of the community, your team, uh, fellow craftspeople. You can imagine a world where you're using skills that are internal tools and skills that are made by fellow designers and uh, really adding capabilities to your assistant, but those that are made by the creativity of the masses, not just a few, whether it's people that can code or AI research labs. We think there's going to be a proliferation and abundance of new type of software. And we think building that on top of the browser means that not only can you tap into the unique personalization that we get from our personal AI model, but also you can hook into web apps and so on and so forth. Because what you can see over here, when I was turning to uh, Dia to help me write in this Notion doc, is that we actually can do integrations with web apps that others cannot. So when, I, when it writes this AI generated writing for me, it's not only is it matching the style of this document because it can read the document and it knows how I write because it sees me right in the browser, but I have this little insert button that's going to take what I wrote and pop it over to there, which again is one of the biggest challenges with AI chat tools is getting stuff in and out. So hopefully you can see this, this kind of virtuous cycle potentially emerge where these three building blocks, personal AI, just open tabs and it gets to know you and your life embedding this personal AI in the tools and the apps and the files you use every day and hook into them in the way that you only kind of the browsing layer and then exposing those capabilities to you, to the community, to teams, to companies, to make their own AI native apps or experiences. You can see how that could potentially be a virtuous cycle. I'll just end by showing you one of my favorite ideas uh, for the near future, which is imagine exposing these capabilities to third party companies. So we're huge cursor users on our team. Why can't I just be looking at a web app that I'm developing or a website and say, hey, cursor, can you go off and make this change for me? And it can go connect to cursor and do that in the IDE and then reflect that change back on the web page I'm developing in DIA. This is obviously a very coding specific experience, but you can imagine this applying to other, other partners, whether it's Notion or Spotify or Shopify, you can really let your mind wander. Um, so anyways, we will include uh, a link to the beta, the DIA beta alongside this video, two call outs. I didn't demo a lot of things, including the browser bits. So I can say, you know, weather this weekend, and it's going to automatically route me to Google instead of AI chat like it did before. Uh, so there are a lot of things that I'm not touching on. We'll also include a tutorial video that shows more of the basics, but I just wanted to give you the high level ideas and concepts. Uh, final caveat is you'll see that what I've been doing is, uh, just typing questions about me into this text box. It's very expensive to run memory and we wanna harden some things around uh, uh, security, privacy costs before rolling it out to everybody. So for now, to protect you, what you'll have to do when you turn on this feature is you go to your experimental settings and turn on this memory feature and then you'll have to attach your history uh, at history in order to use that feature. 
Again, that's not going to be uh, in the in the production build uh, in a matter of weeks, uh, assuming we can get the cost under control. Um, but soon you'll just be able to uh, do what I just did here. Okay, one last heartfelt thank you. Uh, perfect timing because the doorbell ringing for everything that whoever you are, you've done for us. We really appreciate you uh, and we'll see you on the internet soon.